Hello and welcome back to this new zoomed in updated Python 4DH series of tutorials. Uh, in this video, we're going to start branching away from basic data and we're going to start talking about something that's very fun, very close to my heart, and that's data structures. And the first kind of data structure that we're going to talk about are tuples. In the next video, we're going to get to lists. And then in the video after that, we're going to get to dictionaries. But for right now in this video, we're going to talk strictly about tuples. So what are tuples? Well, if you don't remember from my first, my second video in this series, a tuple is a data structure that is an immutable object. That means it is an object that cannot be changed in memory. It's going to function very similarly to a list with that one major difference. So all a tuple is, a tuple is just a series of items in a list. So let's make a tuple right now. Let's just say um, R1 for ra random one. Uh, a tuple we're going to create by creating an object, making it equal to, and an open and a close parentheses. This is telling Python that what we're dealing with here, this particular object, is a tuple. That's very important. If you don't have that, Python's not going to read it as a tuple. So let's go ahead and make a tuple. We're going to have the tuple consist of a string, and then a number, or an integer, and then a float. So we can see here R1 is a list of three different things, a numerical string, an integer, and a float. And if I were to print off R1, I would see it printed off just like that. OK, great. Uh, but oftentimes, we need to actually access something from this particular list. And that's what makes tuples useful, is that they ha have some kind of it's a list of something that's kind of all got something in common. Now, none of these really have anything in common except for the fact that they're all kind of numerical in nature. But in the real world, when we extract data from websites or anything like that, uh, usually we form these tuples because they have something in common. They came from the same source. Uh, they're a list of names, etc. And we need to oftentimes access individual pieces inside of these texts. And this is called indexing, or grabbing something at a specific index. So they take a zero-based positional uh, statement. And that sounds more complicated than it really is. All that means is that position one here is a zero, two is one, and three is two. You're going to have to just train your brain to think that way from now on. So the way in which we do this is we want to say print off R1, and we use an open and a square bracket. And this tells Python, OK, I'm going to be looking for a number now, an integer, to tell me which index to grab. So I print off R1 with an index of 0. I print off 1. And if I do that with number 1, I get position number 2, etc. Oh, 2 down the list. What happens if I print off index number 3? Well, if that happens, I get an error. It says tuple index out of range. It's an index error. And that happens when your list does not have that position. But what if I wanted to print off multiple things in the list. For example, I want to print off these two right here. So if I want to do that, you might be thinking to yourself, I'll do zero and then this colon, which tells it two and one. But that doesn't work. This is how we uh, pr uh, print off multiple indexes from a list or a tuple. We use a colon to delineate up to a point. And that's because, and the reason why this doesn't work, it only prints off the first one, is because we are telling Python to print off 0 up to 1. So it's going to stop at 1. So we need to print off 0 up to 2, and we can print off the first two items in that tuple. And we can do that with just simply using this colon here. And this can do a lot more things. We can print off 1 to infinity. So to the end of the list, and it'll print off position 1 and 2. Let's just demonstrate this a little bit more. We're going to have 1, 2, 3. Just make up some numbers right now. And it'll print off from that position. We can print off from position uh, 3, which is 2. So it's going to print off from there onwards. And we can do the exact opposite as well. We can say, I want to print everything up until a certain point. 
So infinity, so in the beginning, up to position number three. And what that's going to do is it's going to print off one, two, and three, and then stop right here. So that's how you print off and index specific items in a list. And the only way to print off every item in the list, if you wanted to print each individual item off, and you're going to have to do this a lot, is going to be with a for loop, which I'm going to get to in a few lectures. I'm going to just go ahead and demonstrate it now. So if I wanted to say for item in R1, print off item. What that's going to do is print off each item. This is going to be a fundamental, fundamental task that you are going to do every single day when you work with Python 4DH. And you're going to do this more often than you realize because essentially for loops and conditional statements are the backbones of any coding language. So that's how you print off a tuple. What's amazing about tuples and lists in Python is that embedded within them, you can actually have a series of lists. So let's do R2, or a series of tuples. I'm going to create a tuple. And within that tuple, I'm going to have 1, 0. And then I'm going to separate this tuple with a comma. And I'm going to have 2, comma, oop, 2, comma, 0. And then I'm going to have 3, comma, 1. So here what we have is a tuple, and we separate each item in the tuple with that comma, just like I talked about in lecture number two. And within that tuple, we've got another set of tuples. And we can kind of just keep on nesting these, like Russian nesting dolls, all the way down to infinity as, long as, we, as much as we want to, as long as we keep on formatting everything correctly. And remember, to separate something in a tuple, you need to separate it with a comma. So if I were to print off R2, we'll see that that's printed off that tuple just like that. And what do you think will happen if I print off R2 and with an index of 0? Take a moment and think about that. What would happen? Well, if I run it and then you said this, you'd be right. It's printing off the first item in that index, not the first thing like the one here. And the reason is because this item or object is the first item in that a tuple, the base tuple. What if I wanted to access something within that tuple? Well, just like a good nested rushing doll, you can access it by just doing this. So if I do that, I print off R2, the object. I tell Python to grab the first object in that tuple, which is this object right here, and then give me the first object within that tuple. And in that case, it's a one. If I print off position number two, I'll get the zero. So that's how you access indices within indices. And this can keep on going into infinity. So if I were to print off another tuple, then that tuple, now we're getting just crazy. And I were to print off uh, two, there we go. And you'll see that I can get that. And then if I were to wanting to get the next thing in there, so that one, I can grab that. You can see what I'm doing here. It'll just keep on going. We can keep on doing this all day. So that's going to be how you actually access every item within a tuple, even within a tuple within a tuple. Okay. Now, what I want to do now is kind of move on to show kind of more of a real life example of a tuple. Let's say that I had a list of emperors. And this list of emperors is going to be separated by a series of commas. Now, you're oftentimes going to get this in what are known as CSV files, or comma-separated value files. Now, I'm going to show you how to open up CSV files and interact with them in a much later video. For right now, let's kind of create this data manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this object, emperors, make it equal to a tuple. And I'm going to do something that's probably not going to be familiar to you. I'm going to hit Enter. And that's going to essentially create an object uh, that's a tuple and send the end of it right down here. I haven't done anything to break anything yet. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a list of emperors whoop, within this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to say Charlemagne. I'm a medievalist, so why not? We're going to say 742, which is his birth year. We're going to say 800, which is his year of coronation. And we're going to say to 814, which is the year he dies. So that's the first item in our list. And then the next item in our list, and I'll explain what I'm doing in just a second. We're going to say Louis. Oh, there we go. And we're going to say that's his son. 
who was born in 778. 813 is when he becomes coronated as a co-emperor, and 840 is when he finally kicks the bucket and dies. So we're going to say Lothar comes next. We're going to say 795 for his uh, birth year, 817. Ooh. For the year, he's given the co-emperor status, and 855 is when he finally dies. So in a real life example, I might say something along the lines of for emperor and emperor's print emperor, which will allow me to actually go through and grab all that data individually. This is a real life example of when a tuple or a list is going to be very, very useful. The other time in which you're going to need to know about tuples is going to be when you're working with what are known as functions. Now, I'm going to talk about functions much, much later in this series. Uh, they're kind of one of the more higher end and more complex things to introduce um, students to. But a function is a piece of code that you can write so that you can repeat a task without having to rewrite that task. And the way we create a function in Python is by using DEF. Again, I'm going to talk about this in a later video and uh, just giving it a name and telling how many arguments it's going to take. Ignore all that for right now. I'm just doing this to demonstrate when you're going to be using tuples. So in this multiplication function I'm kind of creating, I'm going to say x is equal to a times 2, which is whatever we actually feed it. And then y is going to be equal to a uh, times 3. And essentially, I am going to have an, uh, an integer kind of come into this function and then be multiplied by 2 and then multiplied by 3. And then I'm going to send that back to the user with that statement there. So here is print mole. And I'm going to say print mole and I'm just going to give it a 5. And what that's going to do is it's going to send back to me uh, these uh, this multiplication. So what a function does is it allows me to send something into a bit of code that'll then get manipulated by that bit of code and return it back. All of that is just to tell you one very important thing. When you have information come back to you from a function, you're going to always receive it as an immutable tuple. That's one of the reasons why you are going to have to become familiar with tuples, how they work, and how to interact with them. Because a lot of the times when you process data in Python, you're going to have to process it as a tuple that is being returned from a function. So that's going to be it for this video. This kind of is a rough introduction to tuples, how to work with them. And like I said in the last few videos, if you want to learn more about them, go down to pythonhumanities.com. Go to part two, data structures in Python, and check out lesson number five. And it'll go through and kind of rehash some of the stuff that we talked about in this video and give you some real world coding examples to kind of work through or coding exercises to actually do. Very simple stuff. Create a tuple, create a tuple that consists of tuples, and then print off each item in that tuple. So go ahead and play around with it. And for number three, don't try to create a for loop if you want to go for it, just manually type in print off index zero, print off index one, etc. on down the list. So that's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.